Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another stream. Paul and I Hello. are here today. <laughs> Kyle's technically here too. He's off to the side. <laughs> he's uh, he's making some uh, some really high quality dividers with uh, Ninjago Lego boxes. Yep, we're cutting up boxes for dividers. We ran out of everything else to do dividers, and that's what's slowing our store down at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> like quite literally. Um, today, I'm going to build this set that I've had for probably close to a year now. I'm going to announce if not it more than a year. Um, and I'm finally going to start building it, and we'll see if it ever gets finished. But we're going to start, and that's what's important, right? Yeah, that that's yeah. what's important. Okay. And Paul's going to be cataloging. Oh, yes. stuff's falling out already. Paul's going to be cataloging because he's trying to be productive while I am not productive today. But that's okay. Um, what was that? Oh, yes. As you can see, Evan and I are a little bit tired. We, we were up quite late having a pointless discussion in here. Uh, That's unfortunately, true. Unfortunately, we, we had clocked, well, Evan had clocked in, and I came in, not clocked in, and distracted him from like, I don't know, 7 30 yeah. or 8 until 1 a.m. And yeah, I was didn't supposed get to be doing stuff, all. and I only did maybe like 20 minutes to a half an hour of work, and then Paul distracted me the other four and a half hours. Uh, but hello to everyone who's here. We got a few people here. We got Brady from uh, Canada, Funbrick Creations from Australia, Dunder, Mif Dunder Mifflin Brick Co. from the United States, I believe. Does Mickey have an E? Yes. No. Yes, it does. What? Okay. Mickey does have an E. Four. I'm gonna try to not pour out. Actually, I think the instructions say how many bags go in each thing. Oh. At everyone was very important. Ah, good job. Thank you. Uh, Brick Brothers Brick Shop, welcome to the stream. So we got four stickers in this set. Not too bad. This is about an 1800 piece set, 18 plus, whatever that means. Um, and yeah. And you know, when this first came out, I was really not so sure about it. I wasn't, uh, was not a big fan you know, of the look. Of it looks a heck of a lot better than the Yoda one. That's true, that's true. I, I didn't like how this looked online when it first came out until I went to the Lego store and had seen it. And once once I saw it, I was like, oh, it actually doesn't look as bad as I thought. And then I got it. Can I can I dump this out? Uh, no. It's gonna make some noise. No, you can't dump. No, okay. No dumping. All right. So we're gonna start with Mickey Mouse here, because that's what the instructions say. Are they separate? So you can. They are. There's one and, oh, then and two. Why why aren't you doing this with Kaylee? Uh. Because she Kyle. works five days a week. That that is a good point. Or me, Kyle's cur Kyle. You're not important. Kyle's extremely important with what he's doing right now. Like true, imperative. True. He's making dividers. If you guys are a little bit late, out of boxes at the moment. Not our ideal divider situation, but we need dividers uh, in order to continue the store. So he has the most important task. We're doing currently. good. Uh, Brady. You know, what would be I don't know if I haven't already responded to you or not. I have not. I have not. Um, what would be amazing is if you just make dividers the whole stream. I <laughs> wonder how many you could get through. More than I want to, less than we need it. <laughs> yeah, he just said more than he wants to and less than we need. Them. Yeah, that's uh, that's very true, probably. Okay, it actually doesn't tell you how many bags for... Uh, it just says number one makes the base. So, there's two number one bags. I'm going to assume... I guess I have to pull out all the bags. Oh no. What's wrong? I've been marking everything as no. Great. Okay. Right, there we go. So seven, four, five, eight, so eight, six, seven, six, oh, nine. Hello, seven, Kurt eight. from Belgium. We are from uh, sunny and uh, too hot for me, Southern California. Yeah, it's actually not even that bad today. We're in, in California. The garage, it is not that bad. For some reason, in my room, it is like 85 in there. Which doesn't make any sense because not no sun hits your room. I know it's it's very confusing, and I have a fan cycling air through the window. I, I don't know. It's deeply troubling. I hate the heat. <laughs> But in here, there's like a nice breeze. So. Yeah, there's a nice breeze going through here right now. Okay, so we got the printed tiles here. One that says Mickey Mouse has his signature, and one that says Minnie Mouse. 
and has her signature. So the two printed tiles here, pretty cool. Um, and we're gonna build the base for Mickey to stand on now. Uh, what is uh, 20 degrees in uh, in American? In American? Yeah. Um, Around 70, I think it's 68. Okay, I wish that it was that temperature here. It, it It's not that hot here. I would say it's probably 75 here. Maybe yeah, that if, like. You, you get chilly at like, too, but but you can't argue much. and say 75 is hot. Like, 70, like, 75 is warm. It's well, currently 24 degrees. Here? Okay. Cool. So it's not even that hot. <laughs> <laughs> so you're wrong. I guess so. That's this, what, that's what that's, started that's our discussion last night. This looks was, very, uh, very signed. Like yeah. some, fig some signatures look, look pretty fake. That looks pretty real. Where yeah, it's Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Where did the Mickey and Minnie Mouse signatures come from? Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Yeah. You know, it's like The problem I, here is the audience can't hear you. I know. I mean, or just barely. You're a little quieter. So I'm just going to be talking off screen. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when I was little, I really wanted to prove whether or not the Easter Bunny was real. Not Santa. I didn't care about Santa. But whether or not the Easter Bunny was real. So I thought there's one thing that you can do to make sure that someone's real. You can ask for their signature. And, and you got the Easter Bunny signature. Yes, I got the Easter Bunny signature. Nice, someone nice. who's not real could not make a signature. No. And then the next morning, I got the Easter Bunny signature on Easter, and nice. I was still totally have convinced. Do you still have I the Easter Bunny? I seriously doubt it. Because I'm actually, curious as to what that looks like. I've never gotten the Easter Bunny signature. There's a box that it might be in. <laughs> there's, the, there's, All right, we should it, find that. It, it has, I might know where it is. Because you got the Easter Bunny signature. That is amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you have the Easter Bunny signature, Kyle? You do not. No, I, I don't either. You just aren't as important as me. No. I'm the Easter Bunny's chosen representative on, on this. Funger uh, Creation Earth. says it's 4 degrees Celsius here at 8 a.m. where I am in Australia. So that's about 40 in Fahrenheit, I guess. Yep. Is my guess. That's pretty cold. Times it by 2, add 30, gets pretty close. So it's about 38. Yeah, so. That's that's not good. Kurt, yeah. where are you from, Kurt? Oh, from Belgium. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, not Fahrenheit there. That's in uh, Celsius. Celsius. <laughs> Celsius. Celsius. I was trying to do some sort of accent thing, and it just didn't. It didn't work. I don't know what accent that was. I don't either. I'm not entirely sure. Did you already say hello to everyone from the beginning? I don't know. Hello, Dunder Mifflin and oh, yes, uh, everybody else. Uh, oh, yeah, it's midwinter there. That is true. Yeah. yeah. I prefer the cold over the heat. I'm I, sure I I've agree. said this, I think but I'll I'm sure we've all, yeah. It feels, it seems like it's, you know, actually, I'm pretty sure mathematically for, for like a household appliance, it is actually more energy efficient to get hot than it is to get cold because like colder than the the temperature around you because you have to uh pull heat what, out what anything's a smoke machine if you use it in oh you're saying it's easier to heat things up than to cool things down yes oh, okay <laughs> sorry because that's not what you i mean it might be what you said but like you said it in a very convoluted way that's what i do yep uh dunder mifflin says that uh he spent uh, last weekend building Diagon Alley. It displays really well. And Lego could have done way better with the box art on it. Huh. Interesting. So that, because that's what I was worried about. I was worried that it was going to be too long to like go anywhere. Too long to display. Yeah, like longer than most people's shelves are. Um, so it's, it's good to know that that's not the case. I mean, but you saw it in the Lego store. We, we bought it together, so. No. Yeah. Did you we? were there with me, yeah. Because you, you were right. You were like, I maybe was, we I was, should get two. Yeah. You, you wanted one. And I was looking at uh, most Isley, too. Yeah, yeah. Which was not as big as I wanted it to be. Right. Um. Should go back to the Lego store and waste more money. Um. Okay. I'll let you waste more money. Funbrook Creation says he has one bag left on the typewriter, and he's slowly oh, cool. getting the video up on his channel. Congrats. I hope your channel is doing well. Uh, Kurt says, in the journal, they say that it is extremely hot in America now. Uh, yeah, it depends yeah. on where you are. Yeah, like Death Valley this week is supposed to get to 130 
plus degrees Fahrenheit. And I think the highest record, or the highest, the hottest place on Earth, like the record was in Death Valley years, like a long time ago at 134. So like supposedly we're supposed to get really close to that. We don't live in Death Valley. But <laughs> we, we are we are within driving distance. It's supposed to be really hot. Yeah. Like crazy hot, which is not a great thing. We are within, are you proposing a road trip? Not right now. <laughs> That that is that is actually dangerous. That is probably beyond the safe operating temperature of most vehicles. Let's see, this is important. It is not important. Let's see. How many dividers have you made? I don't know. Okay, uh, fun, Funberg Creation says that he's got 111 subs and is very happy with his progress. Awesome. That's fantastic. I think we had checked in with you not that long ago, and you were at like 80-something. So that is definitely very good. I, I'm pretty Maybe. sure. Maybe. I thought like a couple weeks ago he was at like 102 or 107 or something I don't know. Like I, have, I have no concept of time, so. But maybe not. Either way, you're over 100. Kurt, Great job. Kurt asks, what's the biggest percentage you can get on Lego sets in America? Well, that really depends on where you're getting them from. At, like, Walmart or something? Um, 70. I don't know. Yeah, 70%. Yeah, not most sets, but, like, a set that they've had for a very long time and it's been sitting on the shelf forever. 60 to 70%, maybe. It's also got to be a set that's really not in demand. I'd say most of the time, the highest you'll see at Walmart is probably about 40 to 50% off only during their clearance times. Other than that, uh, I think Walmart for the most part has everything like kind of always at like 10% off or like a, a few dollars it's, marked it's down. It's everyday low prices or something like right. that, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's... Does but, Walmart price match? I don't know that there's other places that are much cheaper than Walmart. But I feel like they would... This, this is probably considered fraud, so nobody listens to this <laughs> idea. But what if you opened a store, like yes, a membership yes, store, <laughs> and you charged prices lower, but it was under the assumption that nobody would buy anything, right? Yep, that's fraud. <laughs> and then you go to Walmart and buy the sets. Well, you don't. People pay you a membership fee to be able to get receipts. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's probably fraud. Don't do that, kids. In some way, that's unethical for sure. At the at the bare minimum, it's yeah. unethical. Walmart used to. I know they can't hear me. Walmart used to price match eBay posts. Really? Ooh, that's a bad so decision. People just make eBay posts. Ah. Yeah. But don't you have to actually purchase the item? You, it doesn't have. To, oh, what? I thought you actually had to have a proof of purchase, and then you would have to go return. Huh. Why would that make sense? Why would you need a proof of purchase to match a price of something you're going to buy? Sure, I guess they're matching, not beating. Yeah. It's not like those mattress stores where they'll beat any price or whatever, sit and sleep <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Sit and sleep. <laughs> what is it? Or free. yeah, we'll beat yeah. any price or, or, your or something. Is free. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bradshaw Studio. Three dollars. Thank you Studio. so much. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Brick Brothers Brick Shop says, "Have you guys found any Walmart clearance yet?" Um, no. No, but you know what we didn't do. Look for Walmart clearance. <laughs> uh, but we did get a ton of stuff from yeah. Target. Uh, it was a mixture of Target. There were like one or two things on AM. Actually, no, no, no. I, there were a few Walmart things. Um, there were a few Prime Day things, a few Walmart things, some Target clearance, um, and I think that was it. But yes, actually, we, there was a little bit of Walmart. Nothing. We have not gone and like cleared out an aisle though. Not like we did a year and a half ago. Yeah, that was a that was a very very nice purchase. I, I still think we should go on a uh, on a Walmart road trip. I know you say that all the time, but also like I haven't done it. Actually, exactly. I did do it. I did do it once. You did. I, do I, it. Did, I did go on a Walmart road trip, and it was incredibly disappointing. Yes. <laughs> you lost us money. <laughs> yeah, I did. If you haven't heard the story, Paul went on a Walmart road trip thing to like. And I misinterpreted the price guide, despite somehow being part of this company for many months. Yeah, I don't even and know. And having how. purchased many things. Yeah, and he, he I made something that parted out for like 1.7 times or something, something like, like that. that. Something super low. Less um, than two times. I, st I still don't know how I did that. But um, I went to 
I think it was every Walmart in LA City. It wasn't like LA County, but it was every Walmart in LA City. Um, no. Yeah. In LA metropolitan area. Um, and uh, because it, it took me like all day. Um, yeah, and I had like uh, 20 Walmarts on your list. Yeah. Yeah, and you didn't even get to all of them. And no, because you had me arc up. like that, I used a program that built the most efficient route for you to take to hit all of those locations. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was incredibly unsuccessful. I, I, I didn't find any deals because the one that I thought was a deal was, <laughs> yeah. was uh, inaccurate. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, very disappointing. What set was that? That was, was a Batman, Batman set. set. I don't think I did that one. Hello, uh, Sharks and a Brick. Sharks and a Brick? Yes. That's a new one. I believe he's in our oh. Discord. I feel like Sharks and a Brick, I feel like you uh, changed your username. Or, or am I thinking of something else? Because there was something that had to do with Sharks. Unless it is in Discord, maybe. Yeah, there, he's in our Discord, I think. Okay. If you are not part of our Discord, come join our Discord. The link is in the description of every video and should be in the description of this uh, of this stream. There are lots of people there who can help you with many things. Wow. What a way to sell That was a great Discord. sell. Oh, you know, I, I, what can I say? I'm, I'm a professional marketer. Mm-hmm. I'm really good at marketing people to other to to competitors' products. Good. Ah, uh, he made a new account. Made a new account called Sharks in a Brick. What was your name before again? It still had to do with sharks, I thought, right? Like, like it was something. And I, because the the little lo whatever your little logo thing is looks familiar, but also it's very far away and small on the screen. So maybe not. Sharks in a brick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the little shark minifig looks familiar. Maybe that has nothing to do with you. <laughs> Just because that's a CMF, I think. Um, or something. But I also feel like uh, feel like we know you. Shark, Our shark production. That sounds right, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 That sounds familiar. OK. Well, welcome to a new. Uh, New account on our account. <laughs> there are a lot of different types of doors. Yes, make sure you get the left or right door correct. There's a chance that this isn't Lego, so. What do you mean? It doesn't have a logo on it. That's Lego. That's one of the old. It doors. might be. On first uh, first glance, this looks. Yeah, it's this one. Uh, Looks to be Lego, but it is not. No, it says Tyco on it. I know, but at first glance, these two plastics look quite similar. Okay. Uh, Funder Creation says, "Well done, getting to 4,000 subs. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we hit 4,000 the other day. Thanks to you guys. Um, so I guess I, I guess welcome to our 4,000 sub uh, stream right now. <laughs> uh, okay." That's a disappointing thing. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's an Evan build stream. He hasn't done one of those in a long time. No, where you did it. No, I did the dinosaurs. Yeah. No, I finished that. You finished the dinosaurs, but yeah. I started the dinosaurs. <laughs> All right, I think I found it. Okay, we're almost done with the base here for Mickey Mouse. Um, my next goal is to get to 250 subs, hopefully early next year. I don't see why goal. you can't do it by the end of this year. Like, I feel you know you know what fun brick creations. I, are we subscribed? I'm gonna get I you don't know. to I'll check, I'll check. Kyle's gonna do it. <laughs> Kyle's gonna subscribe to you if we're not subscribed. Um, we we might be. We probably are actually. Um, I know I've watched your videos. But now I'm curious if we're subscribed. And if we're not, we're going to subscribe right now. OK, so this next part we're making, essentially we've built the stand that Mickey stands on. And then on the side here, this is actually kind of like a film reel. And there will be the little frames or the little things that uh, the little circles on the film where the pins 
stick in to twist it um, or to like re roll it up and stuff. Um, that's what we're going to put in here next. Um, so this will be kind of cool. By and the way, we have the bait. Yes? Um, when you're cataloging, are you, when I mark something as brown, have you been changing it to reddish brown? Only if it is reddish brown. Some of your colors are off, brown and okay. reddish brown. Because I did find a brown piece in with reddish brown pieces. How long ago would that have been cataloged? Not long. It was somewhere over here. Yeah. Some of the colors have been iffy. It's like, we are this subscribed, is it looks like. Oh. We are now subscribed. <laughs> Kyle just subscribed to both, to both Fun Brick Creations and Fun Brick Creations movies. Excellent. Cool. I don't know what that channel is. What is that channel? No, I was asking him, not you. <laughs> Unless you want to do some quick research. Uh, speed builds. Speed builds. Oh, so that's where the speed builds are? Wait, what's on the front of the creations one? Wait, wait, okay, wait, hold on. He doesn't have an about on the movies one. As a channel, we weren't supposed to find. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> He's at 112 subscribers. 112 subscribers now. Awesome. I think you can get to over 200 by the end of the year. Yeah. I think you can do it. Oh, I guess we're just, oh, I gotta build two of these? Dang it. So, I think I've, I know I've talked about that we have a 3D printer and we made make dividers. What happened is we ran out of the resin that actually turns into the dividers and stuff. Uh, just Bricks, welcome to the stream. Um, but yeah, we, we were doing, uh, we've been working on Printing, that's Speak. what it's called. I'm trying. I was trying to, I was like the making, but it's, it, we've been working on printing dividers. Hello, Fidel. Welcome to the stream. Um, and we've been doing a lot, uh, a ton of dividers, actually. Almost every single one of the drawers we have, not every single one, but probably 90% of the drawers we have has a divider in it, um, which means out of 4,000, 4,100 drawers, you know, a lot of those are small or uh, big drawers, so maybe... It's probably 3,000 dividers on the wall. It's a lot of dividers. Um, and we've made about 1,500 of those. We actually recently, just the other day, well, no, a, f a week or two ago, we hit the point where it made sense for us to buy the 3D printer and, pay f and buy the dividers and stuff. We're now saving money every time we print it, which is a cool, cool little milestone to hit. Um, but yeah, we ran out of resin. So specifically, we have this kind of clear resin that's like iffy clear. Um, frosted. 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 <laughs> it is frosted resin. Exactly. It's kind of clear. You can see color through it. You can't exactly see the piece. But so we've been printing on to, or with that, and we ran out of that. So then we started printing, or I tried to do a couple prints on this gray resin that we have that's like faster to dry and all that kind of stuff. And the first one I did just didn't work out at all. It was a whole disaster, so I just threw those away. That was not even not good at all. And then the second one, which is kind of over there hanging out trying to cure um, under light, is mostly just what? It's most likely going in the trash. It's, most of it's going to go in the trash, and it's super brittle. So like it, if you bend it the tiniest amount, it just shatters. So with the other one that we kind of you know over the f a while ago, I figured out how to do it. That one doesn't shatter. The clear or the frosted, if you want to call it that. So uh, now we've purchased some more resin, it's on the way, and we will just keep, uh, keep going with the clear frosted because unfortunately the gray one is bad. But the cost of the gray one was a lot less than the clear. Okay, so it would have saved money, but it doesn't save money when it doesn't work. I need your perfect eyesight. <laughs> yeah, right. What do you want, the number? Yeah. Ooh, this is a rough one. Yeah. It's not 92509. Nine two five. Oh my gosh. Nine two five three nine. No, but oh, uh, I did not try checking if it has an alternate ID on Bricklink. Hmm. This this is a rough one. Uh, let's read some chat here. Nope. Got a bunch of those white trays from Target last week. Very helpful for sorting my use. Says Just Bricks. We actually bought. Um, a ton, like a hunt. How many did I? Yeah, over a hundred more trays the other day. Um, yeah, and yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, this one's hard. 
Anyone know the... 32583? Uh, nope. But let me check if that's an alternate ID. Does anyone know why Brickstock does not have... No, alternate IDs. 325... Do you, can I see that one? This is oh, the search bar. Search uh, four by... S Actually, that's um, Pearl Dark Gray, Pearl right? Pearl Dark Gray, yeah. There's not going to be a lot of things with that. Why are your pictures so big? I make them big. I think that one that was up there it was the one you have in your hand. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we got it. We bought so many of those white trays the other day. Um, Fidel says, how are the used pieces sales going? Pretty good. The used pieces are definitely getting us more sales. Um, and I've definitely seen orders that, I mean, I haven't really been packing orders, but I think there's orders now that are mostly used pieces. Yeah, definitely. Um, as opposed to kind of always being new and then switching to slowly used. Now there's a lot of new, I mean, a lot of used. Uh, Nikolai says, have you guys ordered anything from the Berkling Designer Program with the six sets? No, no. I have not. I um, actually haven't been following that. Um, so I'm probably a bit behind on the news. I've seen like things pop up in my email, but I haven't actually like followed up on them. So if someone wants to fill me in. I mean, do, do you know anything about it? No, um, I do not. It is, did that have to do I remember there being a lot of fundraisers going on. Yeah, and I don't know if that was... That's the email that I kept getting. I don't know if the crowdfunding was for the Bricklink Designer thing. It might have been, but... And, like, I think they needed a certain amount before they made the sets or something. Maybe it was something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, boy. Oh, i got to make two of these things. Of course. Wait, do I? I assume so. I do have to make two. All right, let's start again. Um, yeah, no, Nikolai, we have not. Have you? Has anyone else here purchased um, any of the Brickling Designer Program things? Do you want me to go up to 50 lots, even if it is more difficult to fit it in a bag? Yeah, that's fine. Well, I mean, whatever you... It, if you go... It's not a huge deal, even if you go above 50. It's just a little bit more inconvenient when we're trying to actually part out. For sure. I mean, uh, upload the pieces. I just don't want, like, 200 lots. That would be too... Too much. Too much. Wow. Like, Castle Set sold out in 20 minutes and caused LEGO to reconfigure the whole program. Wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, since it's called the BrickLink Designer Program, and it's clearly much more affiliated with LEGO than the rest of BrickLink is, even though BrickLink is owned by LEGO, the two don't seem to talk a lot. Is this kind of them trying to, like, bridge the uh, consumer bases? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're in the chat, but um, I think they did a BrickLink designer thing a few years ago where they had, like, a fire truck um, and stuff like that, and I'm pretty sure that was BrickLink designer, and it was, like, people that designed it and then let BrickLink got a contract with LEGO to send all the pieces and stuff to actually build those sets and then send them out or something like that. Okay, that's um, pretty cool. I could be wrong on that, but I feel like that was before they had... Been purchased? Been bought by LEGO, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was, actually. Um, this brick says they had a limit of five, and now they have, they've dropped it down to one. That I would have thought they would have started with something like that with a limit of one. Five is kind of crazy. Sharks in a brick says I have to go. I'll be right back. Goodbye. All right, we'll see you soon. Um, so Nikolai said they needed 3,000 pre-orders for the sets to be made, and 5,000 was the limit. Now changed to 10,000. And yes, the castle sold 10,000 because of the bug, because of a bug in the system. Okay, that makes sense. I feel like they would have had more of a limit, because then technically you only need. What did you only, you only need? If it well, it started with five or 3,000 pre-orders. If you could order five. You only need 600 people to buy it then, or something, which is still a lot. Of, but was was that the fundraiser? The pre-order, was that the fundraiser? Or what was the crowdfunding thing? It, or was it for that program? Because I kept seeing the things about crowdfunding, but I never knew if it was for that specifically or just something that, I don't know. Um, 
Um, Thunder Mifflin Brickco says, a few weeks ago, Chris from GBL mentioned something about reverse searching a part by, the, by color. How does that work? Yeah, so in the top right of Brick Store, when you're adding a piece and that menu pops up and there's the colors on the right side, in the very top right, there's a little lock. So if you click a color, let's say you're clicking red and that's the color you select and then you click that lock, it'll only show you pieces that in theory, if, as long as it's all proper in the system, were made in red. If it was something um, that, for example, was didn't come in red, then it won't show you the pieces on your list. So for something like Paul just did, did you find it? You found um, that one? Yeah. Yeah, so it was pearl dark gray. Um, and not a ton of pieces that where you search the keyword bar come in pearl dark gray. So he clicked pearl dark gray, clicked that little lock in the top right, and then it only showed pieces that were manufactured in pearl dark gray. And it filters out so many things. Obviously with like red, blue, yellow, green, the basic colors, it's a little harder. But for certain pieces or certain colors, it definitely is very, very helpful. Hopefully that kind of answered that. Um, speaking of Chris, I really need to put up the uh, community post. Um, Chris and I will be do Chris and us. Yeah, Chris and us will be doing a. Uh, <laughs> what was the pause for there? <laughs> I was trying to figure out if that was the correct grammatical order yeah. because it's plural. But um, Chris and us will be doing a stream on 24th. the 24th where we will be talking about cataloging and used um, and just some general business um, BrickLink stuff. Um, it won't be a free question stream. You'll need to submit your questions ahead of time. If we end up running out of questions, we will have an open thing at the end, but it's going to be more of like a moderated stream. Um, but anyway, I will make sure to post that. Um, after the stream today and you guys can put your questions or just anything that you want to be talked about and we'll go through them and uh, we can talk to Chris um, and figure that out. Um, so more, more details will be coming about that in the future. Yeah, I know a lot of people have asked us since we started trying to bring on catalogers and sorters and other contractors. A lot of people have asked us questions and Chris has been using contractors for his business for years. So um, he's going to I think primarily him or he will answer uh, a lot of the questions that people will have. Um, not that we can't, but I yeah. think it'll be a lot of a learning thing from him just because he has more experience doing that. Uh, Dunder Mifflin says he doesn't see the lock. Are you on the most recent version of Brick Store? Yeah, um, Brick Store, not feature. Brick Stock. And you need to make sure you're updated, yeah. Um, did you make, excuse me, did you make a video recently? Like a brick store tutorial or something? Um, Did you cover that in that video? It wasn't in the. It wasn't in that version. Oh, okay. When that came out, so no. Uh, the one I did, literally, Kyle had noticed it. Like, literally the day after, or maybe two days after I posted the video, they had updated. A decent sized update that added like that, and it changed where some things were in the layout. And so it's like, of course they changed it, but. Uh, someone asked, how's Mickey going? Here's what we got. We got the base so far. You can see it's kind of like a frame of film. It's got the little clicky things where the spools go through to kind of like roll the film along. What? You can tell your film. You know what they're called? No. Okay, there the you go. Point things. proven. So, uh, and then this is the frame of the actual film with the Mickey Mouse signature. And now we get to start on the actual Mickey Mouse himself. Uh, but first, I need to get some water. So Paul's going to entertain you. Hello. Uh, welcome, uh, Henry. I believe, well, I mean, we've seen you many times before, but I don't think you've been here for this stream yet. Um, Fidel says he forgot to close his, his store a couple days before leaving and received an order, had to pack it in a real rush. Yeah, um, I mean, we haven't had to close our store because we go on vacations, but I can understand how that would be uh, very frustrating. Oh, Fidel says he's in Long Beach right now. That's really close. Um, cool. What are you doing in Long Beach? Just on vacation, or are you... Uh, here for work or something. Um, JB says the 3,000 pre-orders were the crowdfunding. If it didn't hit that, then many pre-order hit that many pre-orders, then the sets wouldn't be funded and so wouldn't be made. Okay, that that makes sense. Um, Funbrick says that he likes the lock feature. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, 
Let's see. They had, they did have one program before. This was based on, oh, in reference to the uh, fundraiser. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it looks like they did, in fact, have something a while ago. Um, are you guys? I'm, I'm quite, I'm very bad at, at entertaining without, uh, without Evan here. I've lost my touch, it appears. But um, other than a couple of you had said that, like one of you is building the typewriter and had just finished Diagon Alley. But is anyone else uh, building anything? Uh, new um, or old right now. Fidel says he came to visit some family right on. That's pretty cool. Uh, welcome to California. I don't know if you've been here before or not, but uh, great to have you in uh, in our local area. Hello, Fidel. You're in California. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Cool. I'm back. Welcome and back. hello, Henry. All right, we're on bag two now start actually building Mickey Mouse. It looks like we build his feet, legs, pants, and the beginning of his torso. Uh, and I don't know if you had left before this, but uh, it is based off the, um, the fundraiser thing was based off of the thing from a couple of years ago. Okay. But the reason why they had the fundraiser was it was basically an interest check to see whether or not there would be enough people that wanted to order it. Gotcha. So the fundraiser was specifically for that, and then after the fundraiser, they actually announced that they were going to do the yeah. sets. Okay. Interesting. Apparently, there's only one bag for bag two, I think. At least that's what it looks like. But also said he brought some vintage sets and figs to try and swap slash sell them. Oh, cool. That's pretty cool. Where are you in California? If you... He's in Long Beach. Oh, you're so close. Yeah. <laughs> Wish we had a warehouse or a, a public office, but uh, still, that's really cool. So what is everyone else working on? I feel like I don't I, ask. I just asked that. Oh, you did? No one said anything? No cool. one said anything. Amazing. You know, Is there's there's, six, there's 16 people watching, but there's not a lot of people talking. So we, we we've done this before, but if, if you are just watching, then uh, I think that you should uh, you should say hello to to everybody. Yeah. Is anyone here that uh, is watching that's not chatting or has never chatted before in one of our streams? Yeah. The the hard thing is if they're not signed in. <laughs> that that is true. Then can't it's a lot chat. of work. <laughs> I, I don't I don't blame you if you're not signed in because then you gotta go sign in. That's a lot of work. Or, I bet you there's people out there without a Google account. <laughs> and then you have to make an account. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's people with an art demographic without a Google account. Um, um, there has to be. Dunder Mifflin Brickco says that he's currently cataloging and cussing at mold variations. Nice. So is Paul. Uh, JB's well. Brick Kiln is message redacted. And Henry, <laughs> uh, he got the winter train in the winter village today. Oh, cool. Um, Fun Brick Creation says, I don't build while I watch the streams as I would get distracted trying to record. Uh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Uh, Henry says that he's going to um, use used in a lot, going to sell the rest of it. I assume what he's trying to say is that... Going through a used lot? Oh, 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 oh. no. He got he the, got winter, the winter, train train. winter Village yeah, yeah, yeah. used. Okay, makes sense. And JB is uh, cutting pepperoni for pizza. Nice. Makes sense. Cutting That's pepperoni. A, that's a very you're not, you're uh, important not job. You're just putting whole pepperoni on your pizza? Can I ask why you're cutting your pepperoni? He means I feel like probably we always out make... of a whole thing. Pe pe pepperoni is sliced. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but he's, he's cutting have it Have you ever had a tube of pepperoni? No, but we probably buy cheap, like, Americanized Tyson brand pepperoni. Does Tyson make pepperoni? I have no probably. idea, but, <laughs> but you understand what I mean when I say that something is Tyson brand. I, I think Tyson only does chicken, probably, actually. Um... I feel but like the, that's the all message still comes. No, across. your message is clear. <laughs> um, so uh, maybe he's cutting pepperoni. Yeah, yeah, we got a big stick of pepperoni. Tyson does make pepperoni. Thank you. <laughs> After we finish reviewing uh, wings, maybe we should review frozen we would, chicken tenders. Oh, from oh, from what? a ton of different no, brands. No, I thought you were going to go like pizza restaurants or something. No, no, no. Which I would take forever, but I was more on board with that than that. The, uh, that would also be than true. the frozen chicken. <laughs> 
But you know, you gotta you gotta pe keep people interested with with reviewing weird stuff. Although that's not but really weird. But we haven't done anything weird. That is true. The only, no, no, the that's only not thing true. was thigh stuff that maybe was like. Uh, no, that's. I would recommend that. Um, I don't know exactly when it's going to come out, but sometime within the current Patreon billing cycle. Um, I guess that actually just depends on when you signed up. But for most people, it's probably within the current Patreon billing cycle. It bills them at the beginning of the month. Yeah. Um, I recommend that you join Patreon if you do want to see us doing something a little more weird, uh, food related. Well, that's a stretch. Uh, consumption of, of edible <laughs> items. Um, and oh, who was it? Is it is it JB? Yeah. Yeah, J JB, you... Just Bricks is the one we were like, yeah, oh, you should, you, you should. Yeah. Not trying to tell you what to do with your money, but if you were going to get Patreon for one month, this would be the month to do I don't it. know if I'd, I don't know if I'd go that far with it. I, I think that it's a very... Uh, it's a video that matches nothing else we've ever done, and it's pretty. It was fun to make, and I think it'll be fun to watch at the end. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Brick Brothers Brick Shop says I'm working on building Death Star Two to make sure it has all the parts before selling. Nice. Yeah, that's. That's cool. Wow. At least, at least you're having fun building it, right? You could just be going down the BSX pulling parts out. <laughs> That's what I would do. I don't think I would build it. Jack says he'll be going soon, have loads of work tomorrow, and it's 23.45 here. Wow. Nice and late. Um, when you guys were, were still growing, I'm a bit offended. We are still growing. <laughs> uh, did you notice a big sales increase between 60K Sorry, parts and 110,000 parts? I'm debating getting a 0% loan to boost my store, but don't want to do it if my sales won't increase. Well, here's the thing. That's, it's a 0% loan. It's still debt, though. Yeah, yeah, that, that is true. But um, did yes, we notice we a big saw sales increase? Between yes. 60 and 110,000 parts, I would say between... Yes, we did. Now, um, the downside would be if you are committed to a loan, then you do owe money the money back to whoever that is over a certain period of time and it it does slow you down potentially in the future from you know maybe you want to grow this month or something um or there's all of a sudden this really good sale but you have to pay off this loan and you're just not making enough to do whatever like i don't know if that kind of made sense but I don't want to tell you to get a loan or tell you not yeah. to get a loan, but uh, yes, at, at s between 60 and 100 plus thousand parts, we saw a difference. Um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because like I, I would say if if we were in that position with our current knowledge, we may, but. I don't know where you're located or what other things might affect you that didn't affect us. So I can't guarantee that you know you would be able to generate enough income to make the loan worth it, right? Um, so so yeah. Um, also, it probably depends on the size of the loan. That's another thing. I would not take out uh, a a large loan at that at that point which then brings the question of is it even worth it at all if you're only taking out a very small loan so I, what I think a good question is and it's something we talked about too is yeah if we if we took out a loan but the our sales did not increase could we still pay off the loan with current income yeah. and if we were like if we were able to I think we would be more likely to take on that loan um, than if we were not like I we would not I don't I don't think right now put ourselves in a position where we would take out a twenty thousand dollar loan or something and pay it back at fifteen hundred a month or something that's a very weird loan but like we wouldn't do something where we financially can't do it right now um, so because then you, then you potentially have the uh, possibility of getting in trouble like you just financially can't get that yeah. money 
to go back. Also, so. especially if you're taking it out, I, I assume that if it's a 0% loan, unless you're like getting it through some sort of like entrepreneurial grant type thing, I would rec I would expect that that's probably not through a mainstream bank. Um, so maybe it's it it would affect your it would be less consequential to your future if you defaulted on it, but it's still never a good idea to well, you to do anything <laughs> like that, no. right? Um, but what I was originally going to say before I interrupted myself there is if you're taking it out as a personal loan rather than as a business loan, right? You know, if, if you don't already have a business and that business is taking out the loan, that's also something to consider because then, you know, depending on how you're set up, you might be even more personally responsible um, for that. So that that is something to, to consider as well. That isn't what you asked, though. So technically with what you asked... Uh oh. Um, yes, we saw a difference in sales between um, yes. 60 and then 100,000 plus pieces. Sorry, I just like to talk. I am missing a piece or two, or I did something incorrect. What piece are you missing? One by two yellow plate. Very weird piece to be missing. A one by two yellow plate. Are you sure it's not one of these? It's not. Unless the other foot was. Maybe. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> this one's wrong. Shucks. Um. Fidel says, has anyone ever gone to Bricks and Minifigs Anaheim? I want to go there. Uh, see if I find something cool and find out how much they would give me for the stuff I bought. So stuff I brought. I don't. Have I didn't any know there experience. was a bricks and minifigs in Anaheim, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that'd be kind of cool to go, actually. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard mixed things about them. Um, so I don't know. I've never been to one. Um, well, I haven't heard mixed things from a customer side. I hear hear mixed things on like potentially owning it. Yeah. As a franchise or whatever. I mean, I guess, I mean, here, here, here's what I would think, right? The, if I ran that store, I would pay you less than what I could sell for it, obviously. Of course. So <laughs> That's you how might business be, works. I know, I know. So I'm saying if you're trying to sell that stuff, you might be better off selling it yourself, like on your store. Um, Unless it doesn't sell in Mexico. Yeah. That that is that is also true. Um, or you're trying to like trade it because I think you had said that earlier that you might want to make a swap. And I would assume that if they do do trades, they, do. they would have a ton of stuff that you could get a deal. You know, um, uh, may, maybe more of a deal on by trading than you could just by a dollar transaction. Um, so that that's also something to think about. Sorry to interrupt. Where were you pulled? Um, Kyler runs lightsaber hilt. You put that one in. No. This is a Ninjago set. Yes. Kylo Ren's lightsaber hill? That's the, what I would call it. Oh. It's a okay. T, T cross, whatever. <laughs> you understood what I meant. Did you hear Rocky sneezing? He yeah. sneezes like crazy. This morning? Yeah. <laughs> No, do, oh. does he need to go to the doctor, or is it just his normal I have sneezing? no clue. I don't know. He sneezed for, like, five minutes straight. Huh. Like, not exactly, but, like, very long. I, and just... Rocky, achoo, achoo, Rocky achoo, has achoo, not appeared achoo, in any content, achoo. has he? No, Rocky's never been in anything. I, I think Rocky needs to appear in some sort of con some sort of content. Rocky's the uh, properties cat. <laughs> Who, whoever owns, who, whoever is residenting in the house, uh, takes care of that cat, going back to previous owners. So uh, we are stuck with a cat. <laughs> yeah, we have we have the garbage cat. That's what Paul calls him. It's an affectionate name. <laughs> um. Let's see. Henry says, I also got the town square. Really wanted the orange little train. Cameron, welcome to the stream. 
Um, oh, Cameron says, I went to Bricks and Minifigs in Boise, Idaho yesterday. Really cool. And Just Bricks says, I went to the Lego store on my way home from Six Flags. Didn't buy anything. And then Jack asked Banana, or sorry, Paul, how's Banana doing? Um, banana, how's Paul doing? That's what I was going to say. Yeah, um, Banana's doing good. Um, I guess I, I can post something in Discord. I did uh, have an update for him on Patreon, but I can post some pics in uh, in Discord. He's, he's doing a lot bigger. He's more handleable than he, than he has been in the past. Um, we're still not at a point where I can just pick him up out of the blue, but he'll approach me if I'm lying on the floor, or I can pet him if he sees me coming from a long way away very slowly. Um, so that's a lot of progress. Um, potty training is going quite well, which is very important considering that he now has um, free roam of my room for several hours a day. So that is very important. Um, occasionally there's still an accident, but we're, we're making a lot of progress there. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he, he likes the, uh, the summer weather, so. That's uh, definitely important. I'm glad someone does. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he's now big enough that he can get up. I guess you guys haven't seen my closet. My closet has, like, these cubby things in it. And they're shelves. decent. Yeah, shelves. They're a decent way off the floor. Like, they're, they're floating. And he can, he can get up there now. And uh, I thought I had lost him. My room is pretty <laughs> yeah. well. My room is pretty well banana-proofed. Um, I've I've sealed up everything that he could get to, but I hadn't thought of the shelves because I didn't think that he could jump up there. Um, and I couldn't find him. I knew he was somewhere in the room because he can't get under the door. It's blocked. Um, but I couldn't find him for like, I don't know, a day and a half or something like that. Um, yeah, didn't you sleep overnight one night without knowing where he was? Yeah. Um, I, I It was warm enough that I knew like he wasn't in a threat or anything it was like 75 at night so it was fine but um the next day he he showed up in my blankets and i didn't know where he had been because i checked the bed um but another day i kind of couldn't find him and i was like okay i i'm gonna find out where banana's hiding spot is and i found him up on one of those shelves um behind the bin and so i know that's where he goes now but uh yeah that's that's the banana update uh, Henry asks, did we release a June recap video? No. Uh, no, we have not, not yet. That will be coming out this week, though. It was supposed to come out last week, I think. But, a uh, little hint. It's a depressing month. Right. I couldn't remember what last month was. Uh, June was not the best. Mm. But it could have been worse, too. It could have okay. been, like, way worse, supposedly. So, right. yes. First impulse, what would you call this? Um, trap door, hatch, window. I don't know. No. What is it? Roof. Roof. Oh. Okay. I was going to say skylight next. I, I tried slanted window, angled window, which I should have known it wasn't going to be either of those. That's too common sense. But, uh... <laughs> Funbrick Creation says, uh, I'm going to a local certified retailer, Lego store, later today, which is exciting for the first time. Cool. Awesome. Henry, <laughs> I, uh, I'm sorry. The tone in which I say awesome has nothing to do with the interest. Um, <laughs> if, if I'm very interested, I'll say awesome very, bland, very, very blandly. And if I'm not interested, I'll say awesome very blandly. Um, Henry says that June was awesome for him. July really? has been a crash. Oh, that's good. I mean, not for July, but it's good. June was good for you because yeah. for June it was not great. July, for us, has been better. I'm gonna go with primarily because we started off with sale. Yeah. Um, I'd say that's the majority of the reason that it has been a better month than June so far. Um, but I don't see why we wouldn't do at least what we did in June and July at the rate we're going right now. Yeah. We're just hoping that uh, it doesn't continue to get worse but I, I imagine those first few months are probably the worst i don't imagine that august and september will be as bad 
But uh, it makes sense. Everybody wants to uh, get outside now, especially now that lockdown is ending in a lot of places. Yeah, Lego is a winter thing, I think, for, yeah. for the majority of places. Um, apparently, I lost a piece. Oh, no. Oh, don't worry. We have extras. We do? Yeah. It was actually one of the pieces that they intend for you to lose. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so this is the beginning of Mickey's torso. Let me show you in a second. This is going to be Mickey's torso. And uh, it kind of just clicks into the legs here. So, like so. I feel like I've asked this question. There we go. It already looks like Mickey. It's the shoes. <laughs> but I forgot. I've never seen anything else, anything with these shoes. It. It's a very good representation. The, the, the creative use of the barrels is, is very Yes, nice. yes. This is a, it's, yeah, it's a smart build. What I was going to say is I feel like I've asked this question before, but is there a reason that LEGO uses odd colors in the middle? I think, didn't we decide or, or, or something or conclude that it's cheaper to just put those pieces in than it is to make them? But then wouldn't they be different in every set? They're not. Right, if they just used whatever they had left over, they'd be well, different no, 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 colors. No. But it's cheaper to make that, probably. Oh, you're saying they pick a cheap, the cheapest color to make. I think, isn't that what we, I think that's what we, we just, I don't know if we have an answer to that, but. Or it's easier to see when you're building the inside and with instructions or something. That makes sense. I don't know. Okay, so now we're gonna build the rest of his torso. Um, with bag number three here. So I'll put that there. I hope you guys can't see that. Dang it. I'll zoom out just an itty bitty bit. JB is going to be sorting out some more used after eating this pizza. He'll be in his new workspace in the Brickmobile. Really? That's pretty cool. So is it all, it's all set and stuff now? Because I, I hadn't heard, per at least, I haven't, I don't know if you posted something on your channel or something, but uh, I've been very busy, so I actually haven't really been watching anything. But um, yeah, Evan's been slacking off. Sure. Yep. Um, Doing things other than bricklink. <sighs> yep. Imagine. But yeah, uh, does that mean is is your whole store in there? Because I remember, wow, it ha it probably no, I'm sure it hasn't been a year yet, but it's been a while that you've been talking about the brickmobile and stuff. Maybe it has been almost a year. Fumber Christian says, wow, the first hour of the stream has gone very quick. It's an hour in. Yeah, it has wow. gone pretty quick. Um, wow. That is very interesting. Um, Just Brick says, nothing special yet. I don't know. Uh, Henry says, Just Brick has a nice setup in the van. Okay, cool. I will have to take a look. And in the van, do you have air conditioning? <laughs> yeah, that's a very vital question. Obviously, you have to turn it on and stuff, but, uh, but nice. We, we've discussed... Uh, Actually, just a few minutes ago, we discussed air conditioning in here, I think. Yeah. We've thought about uh, getting central for the house, but unfortunately, that would be rather ineffective in the garage, even if we added a <laughs> vent, because yeah. the garage is not insulated. The rest of the house is insulated. Uh, so the rest of the house would be freezing, and we'd be spending all that money cooling the house. Just to cool the garage. Just to cool the garage. <laughs> um, we might still get central for the actual house, but it will not be the solution to... Uh, the cooling in the garage. <laughs> yeah. Um, we do have a portable AC. However, it is a rather old one and is pretty not worth the money. inefficient. Um, I was doing some research this morning for buying an AC for my own room, and they've gotten so much more efficient over the years. It's crazy. Like, my dad used to yell at me all the time when I was little, rightfully so. I, I got mad at him when I was young, but... 
after looking at the energy bill myself, as an adult, I understand. But um, I used to get so mad because he'd tell me to not run the AC because I wanted like 65 degrees in my room 24-7. Um, um, and it cost so much money. But the, the new ones are like really cheap. I, I had done the math and I double checked the math and I think it, I had figured out that- I, I still, I'm a little if iffy on that. Our, our electricity plan, this is important context. Our electricity plan That's is true. <laughs> uh, a rotating system. So certain times of the day are a lot cheaper than other times of the day. Um, I don't know if that's like a normal thing everywhere or not. Um, but if I only ran it during the off peak time, I, it would cost me like 35 cents a day to cool my room for five down hours. for five hours, which I, I don't think I'd need day. it more than that because I wouldn't have it on continuously for five hours. I would have it go down to a temperature because the room's insulated. So, so long as it gets down, it should stay down for a bit. Um, that depends on the AC, though. It, it's, it was one of those uh, like window mounted ones like that they have in like apartments and stuff. Mounted one, they don't know when to stop. Mm, that is true because the temperature is so close to, you know, it'd probably be, I bet you that there would be a way to ruin the warranty, but like move the temperature sensor to a better <laughs> location in the room. Um, just wire up a little temperature probe. Yeah. Uh, or, or just have it, if there's a way you could set it up to just turn on when and when it has power just automatically, you could really easily just have something else control it. Well, I would be like I'd really love to be able to tell Siri to turn my air conditioner. Yeah, hmm. maybe. I I, f I feel like there's there's got to be a way. Um, yeah, you buy a more expensive AC unit. Yeah. yeah, but I was looking at one. I saw one that was uh, Siri com or uh, Alexa and all that compatible. But how much was it? I don't know. Um, if it wasn't Apple compatible, I wasn't getting it. <laughs> Although I don't I don't need to tell Siri to turn on the air conditioning. Yeah. Uh, just go turn on the air conditioning. How do you guys, do you have solar electricity? We do not, Brickman. We yeah. do not. We did, well, I did, did at the old house when I lived literally very close um, <laughs> with, with my parents. And my dad told me, I don't know if this is true now, but because they sold the house not that long after they got it, it ended up not being worth it. Um, but this was also quite a while ago when it was installed. So I imagine solar technology has, it has advanced lot. considerably since then. Um, but uh, I don't know. See, we don't own this house. If we owned this house, maybe we would consider getting solar. But we'd just be benefiting the next renter. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we don't know how long we're going to be here. I mean, maybe if we're here in five years and are planning to continue to be here for a long time, maybe it'd be worth it. But... I, I don't know what, what things will be like in, in that amount of time, so I don't know. But if, if you own a house, I would say that solar is probably worth it now, uh, especially if you live in an area where electricity is super expensive and it's very hot and sunny. Um, hello, Chris. I was just talking about you. I <laughs> need to post the, uh, the community post to get some questions for our up-and-coming stream on the 24th, uh, which I'm going to post it after the stream today. Um, so we, uh, we should have some topics to discuss and we, we need to, uh, talk and plan about that once we get some stuff. Um, hello, Chris. I'm currently building Mickey Mouse. How are you? That, that was much more friendly and, uh, socially acceptable way to greet someone. Um, <laughs> Jelmer, I, I, don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to try and pronounce that second part of your username or last name. Oxercomp. Um, something like that. Which barcode scanner did you buy to replace the broken scanner? The same one. Um, it's a Trohe Star. It's broken. Well, it doesn't charge. That's the charger. It's Tro Trohe Star. Probably wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> um, but it's this little Trohe Star Amazon, uh, or we've got it on Amazon, little barcode scanner. Personally, I know other people have little ones that you can p kind of put on your finger or something and you can scan like this and it just, you can keep working and scan and keep working and scan, keep working, scan. I don't really like that. I like holding it, but also, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend this brand. <laughs> we replaced it with the same one um, and we just shouldn't have. We should have just gotten 
We should have just paid for a more expensive one that's gonna last and stuff. Oh, it cost us like 60 bucks. No, 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 no. We waited and we got a used one, remember? Oh, yeah. Um, Cause new, they are 60 bucks. Don't spend 60 bucks on them, please. Well, I mean, no. if they're new, they might last longer. <laughs> that one's closer to new. That one's better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, one. that's the one we got, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, Jelmer, please don't apologize for being Dutch. Uh, it's not your fault that I can't <laughs> pronounce your last name. He said sorry. Sorry, yeah. I'm Dutch. Yeah, don't be. Uh, Just Brick says, do you see my response about the Brickmobile? Uh, no, I did not. I've just got my bulk used. Oh, I have a folding table for... S oh, yeah, I've just got my bulk used in there, and I'm also sorting some of my personal stuff in it. I have a folding table set up for sorting, bought a portable AC and a heavy-duty extension cord. Nice. Living the life. Yeah. Um, it's cooler than here. <laughs> Chris says, I'm great. We bought that set for my wife's sister. She loved it, making her into a Lego fan. Nice. Um, we have one finger scanner, says Chris. And we also have two brick style that is nice and fast. Don't know what that is. Uh, and we also have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say traditional style, maybe is what that's supposed to be. I don't know, two brick style. Um, but a finger, one of the finger scanners, yeah. The ones that you Two brick? Like it's, it's on the thing and you... you see? I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Like a grocery store? <laughs> yeah, like a grocery store. No, I don't think that makes sense. Um, maybe. No, I, I think in the future, once we need to replace them, we'll probably go with something a little more hefty. But also, I don't know. The thing with the barcode scanner is I think it helps a lot. Yeah. And then we just got so used to it, so like now we can never not have it. Like trying to do stuff without it is like torture. It feels so slow. Well, I think it's definitely earned its money's worth in terms of efficiency. Probably. Uh, we're doing good, Lego Military Mox. How are you doing? Yeah, welcome to the stream. I don't I'm, know if we said hello. I, I think we missed it. Ah, uh, uh, Chris says uh, we have two Bluetooth scanners that are shaped like an old-style phone, a brick. They're fast oh. and scan quickly. <laughs> gotcha. Hola, assist official. How are you? Uh, how are you doing? So, Chris, how many barcode scanners do you use at a time? And we total, we have five scanners now. We use them all day. Wow. We have five people doing stuff? That's crazy. Yeah, I would say, I mean, we only currently have two. But I don't think we'd ever, we've at least currently not had a situation where we've had two, more than two people doing something at a time that needed a scanner, I don't think. But also, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, it's just official. I don't know if we ever followed up, but how, what happened with the car? Oh, yeah. It's official. Did you get your car? So for those of you who maybe don't know the story, we bought Assist Official's store, which I believe was helping him to purchase, he said, his first car. And I believe it was a BMW something. I don't remember what car it was. Um, but yeah. All right, we're almost done with Mickey's pants here. And I'm not gonna lie, he's a little fluffier than I think Mickey Mouse is supposed to be. It's very round down there. He's been eating a lot of cookies or something. I mean, look at it. Cookies were there. There are. Notice that. I think you're just not. I'm not. S well, yeah, that's true. He doesn't have a head or arms or anything yet, so we'll see when it's all done. What it looks like. Like oh, a military mock. A tail. I forgot. Mickey says has a that tail. he's doing great. Shabbat just ended. Nice. Um, Jelmer. Uh, asks, are you parting out the Nintendo Entertainment System? No. Uh, he's parted it out almost four times. Wow. Uh, huh? No, we, we don't have, we've never parted out that, I mean, yeah, we, we don't even have any. Um, Does that have a good part out value? Um, oh. I've par parting out almost, oh, almost four times value. That must that be That makes a lot I more thought, sense. I thought you meant you've parted it out four different times, and I was like, that's inefficient. <laughs> four times. Wow. 
Um, Good. I feel like that's a hard one to get a hold of, though. Mm, he needs to buy it from Lego. True. Um, Chris, uh, Chris says, on the 24th, when we do the live stream, my store will be closed. Oh. Interesting. Uh, is that just so it's an undisturbed environment, or are you closing for a specific reason? I guess that would be a specific reason. Are you closing for a different reason? Hmm. Ah, Chris says, we'll close for two weeks while we move all the inventory and set up the new pick path. Oh, cool. That cool. is crazy. That's that's super exciting that you're finding everything going in there. I've been watching all of your little, like, couple minute little, um, uh, I guess, update videos. Yeah, how's the, those uh, are, the those exercise center? Right? Wasn't uh, weren't I don't you think I've put seen in any. an exercise center? Yeah, he was. I, I haven't seen anything on that yet. I'm sure that's probably not the priority. <laughs> I think that that should be the priority. Um, Daniel asks, um, I think he's new, so hello, Daniel. Welcome. Hello. Um, he says, uh, We just started a Bricklink store. Can I ask you some questions? Yeah, sure, shoot. Um, three times. Three times. Awesome. Um, Daniel says, yeah, can we ask you some questions? Yes, we're totally down to answer your questions. Also, if you have anything that you think of, like, after, or anything that maybe we don't know, uh, you can join our Discord, where there's a lot of uh, a lot of other store owners, some of whom have stores way bigger than ours, um, who can also help answer questions. Um, so the link to that is in the description of this stream and every video. So if you want to join that, you can. But... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll answer your questions. Most of your questions. Yeah, most of your questions. There are some, there are some things that we don't, <laughs> we don't, uh, don't want to answer. We're relatively transparent, though. Yeah. But congratulations on opening a Bricklink yes, store. Yes, that, awesome. uh, that is a big step. Have you actually opened, or have you just started uh, acquiring stuff? Um, I, it's a I, conversation, Kyle. It is a conversation. It's just a slow motion conversation. Ah, uh, uh, Chris says the fitness area is the last on the list. Ah, oh, we have dang the equipment it. there. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> uh, e E R R uh, says, "Hey guys, first time on your stream. Welcome, Welcome to the stream. We are currently doing two different things, actually. Yes. I'm currently building the Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse set. Not going to get to Minnie Mouse today, but I think I'm going to finish Mickey." And Paul is currently being productive for the store and adding uh, or cataloging used parts that have been sorted into different categories. Not nearly and, uh, as productive as I want. You guys keep distracting me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is your. It's 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 not usually like it's my choice in to be in here. a few hours he can do like four or five categories or four or five bags. Yeah. Um, not necessarily categories, but four or five little things that he's been working on, and then fifty that lots us per bag. Yeah, yeah, fifty lots per thing. So he usually catalogs two hundred lots or whatever. How many lots do you have in your BSX at the moment? 35. 35. And I started this yesterday. Oh, great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really not hitting, that, uh, hitting yeah. that curve here. I'm not helping my average. No. Uh, since Fish says, yes, I got the car. The BMWs were out of stock, so I'm currently using an Opel Carl seven months waiting list on the BMW i3, which freaking sucks. Opel Carl, oh cool. I didn't uh, know still Kyle's those. excited, <laughs> I think. He said he didn't know they still made those or sold those. I I don't. Is is that a good uh, good thing or a bad thing, Kyle? I will show you. He's gonna show us the car. Oh, it's actually kind of like the BMW you wanted, I yeah. think, isn't it? Um. Oh, he says I want it new, not used. He wants the BMW new. They have a seven months waiting list. That that makes sense potentially. Um, Brick Brothers Shop, I'm going to assume that you just tried to link to BrickLink. Unfortunately, links don't work. It's not a setting that I think we can configure. As I've tried posting links using the account, <laughs> and yeah. it has deleted them, so yeah. I'm very sorry. Um, if you put spaces where the dots are, <laughs> it should work. Um, Brick Brothers that Brick Shop, is that what you were talking there. about? Yeah. The, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Daniel says, we opened and we have about 80,000 parts in 3,200 lots. We just want to know, how do you know the exact color? Because there are a lot of colors if you're doing used Lego. By the way, sorry for my English, still learning. Uh, English your English really is good. perfect. <laughs> um, 
It's always the ones who speak perfect English that apologize. That's true. English. That's true. Yeah. Kyle just said those who uh, apologize are the ones who speak yeah, totally it's, fine. It's English. never the uh, um, angry guy screaming at you in like half some <laughs> yeah. language and half another. Yeah. No. Um, it's difficult to know colors. I think it's something over time you begin to learn. But yeah. what I would maybe recommend if you want um, is go through on a brick link and buy. You can't get them all in like two by four bricks, but. 2x4 bricks, 2x2 bricks, 1x4 plates, or something where you can create either a tower or some sort of color sheet. And when you purchase it, you know that I purchased this in reddish brown. So in theory, you're getting it in reddish brown. Yeah. Um, little things like dark gray you'll see is different than dark bluish gray. It's like, it just looks a little ugly. Um, same thing with green. light gray versus <laughs> light bluish gray. It, looks, it has kind of a green tint. It just kind of looks ugly. Um, same thing with brown versus reddish brown. And those are pretty close. What? Um, reddish brown and brown. Yeah, they're Those are pretty close, tough. but brown just has a little bit less red in it. <laughs> it's <laughs> a little it bit darker. Yeah, I it's a say. little bit darker. Yeah, so um, j just like Just Bricks said, two words, color chart. Um, yeah, absolutely. Color chart yeah. is, is your your friend there. Just You kind of have to create one at the moment. Um, uh, Funberg Creation says, I think there's a color chart made. I will look it up as I need to get it. Um, if you're buying one, then then yeah. But the, the issue is your screen will not uh, display the accurate color. It still helps a lot yeah, versus it does. nothing, though. It yeah. does. Um, but if you're like, if it's two really close colors, um, you you might make mistakes depending on the quality of your screen. What we do is if we're unsure on a color, or like if I'm uploading parts, like Paul's cataloged it and put it as light gray, but I'm like, ah, this looks like faded light bluish gray, we just won't sell it. Yeah. Um, we'll just, I don't want to risk potentially um, sending something to a buyer. Actually, the other day we had a very interesting thing. Yeah, he's um, in our Discord, so I okay. don't, we, we don't, I don't know. It's okay, it's not a problem. It just yeah. it was interesting. Be the buyer had purchased reddish brown or true brown yes. or no, something? No, he, he, had, he had purchased reddish brown um, sorry. Oh, which one was it? Is that the the whole thing relies on? I think the buyer purchased brown, like traditional brown. No, no, the buyer he had not. The buyer yes. purchased reddish brown, and it was new pieces. New pieces, and said that they wanted that we had sent them the wrong color. regular brown, and that um, to us was confusing, considering we've, as far as I know, have never had a new condition piece well, in regular brown. And I looked it up, and the last time that piece had been issued new was in 2004, and so obviously we didn't have any sets for that. So I emailed the guy back, and I was like, um, this is really weird. I'm just going to chalk it up. Do you, I mean, he, he'd bought from us many times before, and like I said, he was in our Discord, so it, it was cool. I was just like, I'm just going to chalk this up to something weird, and I'll give you a refund. Um, and... He, uh, I, but I asked him to send some photos just because I was really confused. And he sent the photos, and he thought that dark red was reddish brown. And I looked at that, and I was kind of like, hmm, how, how do I politely explain the situation? And we ended up sorting it out. And he didn't, he he didn't want the the refund. I issued a coupon, actually, not a refund, for this. Um, and he he said that he didn't want it. Um. So it, it ended up being fine, but yeah, that that's the funny little story there in terms of uh, in terms of color. So it, it can happen to anyone. Other than that, I don't know that we've had a color issue yet, right? From buyers that was the I, wrong I color. I feel like we probably have, hmm. but I, I, I can't name anything off the top of my head. I feel like sometimes faded light bluish gray and light gray are close enough. Yeah, that's that why I won't. People even. don't even know. Oh. No, not saying that you should swap them or anything. If, if you're unsure, don't list it. But if you accidentally catalog something, I feel like we might have made that error in the past and people are unable to tell. Um, so that's also a possibility. Not that that's a good thing, right? Because that's still an error that is made. Um, and it's an error that we don't know about, which means that we might continue to make that mistake. But... Um, yeah, it's just, it's really tough. Um, also, um, obviously, you have a lot of new parts, so you can always compare against new parts. Oh, yeah, um, we do things. that all the time. When you have a color that you're like, I think this is reddish brown, but it might be brown, just go in your inventory, search into your inventory and find the actual color you think it is, and then pull it out and compare them. And if they're different, it's not the same color, obviously. If they're the same, then you can 
as long as you have new pieces that came out of a set that Bricklink had the inventory for, it's very likely that that's correct. If you're comparing it to other pieces that you cataloged and you're not sure about colors, then you s your colors could be off. But Yeah, now that said, actually no, that doesn't apply in this case. I was going to say it's better to be wrong consistently, but in this case, no, it's really so. not. So It's better to be right. Yeah. <laughs> So we're almost done with Mickey's torso and his hands, and then bag four makes his head. So that'll be it then, I think, because it's it's been about an hour and a half. This we'll finish been, around this two hours. This has been such probably. an unprotective stream. For you. Yeah. I'm so almost... uh, you have not contributed anything to the store. I'm not clocked in. And I in all fairness, I. I was in here neither for five I, plus hours be. last night. Yeah, talking to me. And you're the one who uh, ruined that. So yeah. just saying. Um. Jalmer also asks how to find the right minifigure parts from a bulk lot. Um, a lot of of motivational music. <laughs> um, you just and a, and a and a very talented therapist. Uh, you'll start to learn the keywords, and when you search for something like a torso that's green with flowers on it, and you search, you know, maybe it's a lime torso, lime flowers. You'll start to learn the keywords, and as you get those like down, it's a lot quicker. Or sometimes, if you just scroll through, like you know this is a Star Wars torso, and you know it's in light or dark gray or something, you can scroll through the dark gray torsos and just look. And that takes a while too, but it's it's a pain. We have had an issue with listing used minifigs. We had one minifig where. Actually, we've had a couple issues. One, the minifig was listed, and I guess the legs were faded, and the buyer wasn't happy with it. Um, so that was that was one thing. And then in addition to that, we also had one where we, because the details between minifigs are so minute, you might list one minifig as another minifig, and the only thing different was like this one little strap that was maybe curved instead of straight yeah. on the torso. But you list them as the wrong minifigs. We've had that happen as well before. And you just refund it at that point, but it's just a lot of like very careful checking and starting to learn the keywords of Bricklink, which are not great. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and uh, if, no. if what you're also maybe asking is how to build from just a bunch of pieces, um, learning to identify things that are valuable, right? It's it's worth your time to do it if a minifig is worth something. If a minifig is is not worth something, it might not be worth your time to try and build it. It might be more worth your time to just list the parts. So a good skill is kind of like learning to triage it. Um, like we recently found, I'm going to bring it up again, Kyle says I've brought this up a hundred times, but we recently found uh, a $50 fig when I was going yeah, through. Yeah, it's still sitting on the counter. Yeah, I know. It hasn't been put in the inventory. i got to do that. But we found a $50 fig and I'd recognize the chest plate. And I'd recognized the um, like a couple other pieces that were sitting around. So I was like, it's worth my time to sit here for 20 minutes and try and find this. 20 minutes? No, it didn't take me that long. <laughs> okay, it good. took me like I don't know, five, five to ten minutes. Five, probably five minutes. It felt like it was longer, but probably actually five minutes, and that was worth my time. But it probably would not have been worth five minutes for me to build a you know 62 cent city fig. So. Um, that's that's an important skill. On another note, none of this applies to Duplo. Good luck. Yeah, uh, Kyle had added some Duplo not that long ago. Um, good luck. What do you mean, good luck? It was really hard to find those. Yeah. The it's, keywords are different. It, it doesn't use anything similar to Brooklyn's keywords. Really? Yeah. And printed pieces are technically their own piece, and you can't search them by the, the, the piece that they are. Like, if you type in the number, it won't bring up the printed ones. Uh, isn't that the same with... No. If you type in the number of a printed piece, it'll list everything, including oh, really? the ones that are printed and stickered. Yeah. But with Duplo, oh, that's terrible. it does not. Um, what is it even called? <laughs> I don't know. One of them was called Fire. Fire Brick was one of the names. On them. Interesting.
Uh, Brick Brothers does recommend to figure it out. Yes, figure it out is okay. is True. definitely good, um, especially starting out or or when you aren't really sure because you can just enter in a bunch of things there, and it will parse it into the Bricklink search engine, uh, which is way better than trying to figure out how the Bricklink search engine works yourself because it's not intuitive. Um, it's just as far from a smart search as you can get. Uh, so that that's definitely another great one. I don't think Ben is here, but um, no, Ben sure. Ben is the developer of it. Um, and if you have any questions about it, I guess you can ask him. He's in our Discord. Um, but no, it's a great tool. Now, if, if only he would make something for, uh, for like, stickers and prints and stuff. <laughs> or there was something else that I was asking. Oh, yeah, if he could figure out a way to make something, you could enter the minifig parts that you do have, and it could tell you what oh. minifigs you could build. But I, I imagine that's much more difficult. So I'm currently working on Mickey Mouse's head now. Um, and then we're going to be done with him. So here's his torso and his legs and his pants so far, and his hands. Uh, Brick Brothers Brick Shop says, the part I tried to link earlier is this part. Let's find out. Seven, three, four, three, five, C, zero. Uh, why why am I looking out for that? Ah, oh, please select the color. I will go with red. Yeah, what what? <laughs> he told me he told me to look out for that door. Wow. Use <laughs> I mean that's in Canadian. Yeah. Because for whatever reason, when we click the price guide button, it puts it in Canadian dollars. But good. 50 bucks for a door. That's pretty good. Or actually, go back. Well, that's max price. Go back. No, no, no. Average <gasps> price. Oh. I was reading the dollar sign as a five from here. Just kidding. <laughs> no, it's... it's that, that can't be what he was... What was up with that door? Sorry, I thought it was a $50 Are door. Are you looking to buy one? Is that... Is that uh, that what uh, what you're asking? Because we might have one in in the store. I doubt it, because we haven't done this category. But it's possible. Maybe he was asking you right now to, to find him one. Maybe that's what he I was. don't. I don't have any. <sighs> Disappointing. Yeah. So this is the internal of Mickey's head. Very weird. Just like a little wall with studs. <laughs> You've gone pretty quickly with that. I gone pretty quicker. <laughs> more quickly, yes. Yep. You've gone more fast. More fast. I think we can agree on that. More faster. Yeah. The most faster, actually. The most faster. I've gone the most faster, yeah. Yeah, this set actually is not a, 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 car, a hard build. It's pretty fun, actually. It's an enjoyable set so far. But I'm assuming Mini is very similar in the way it's built. So, Rick on Block says, hello there, General. Well, I want to respond with General Kenobi. <laughs> hello there, Br Brick on the Block, or Brick on Block. There are many times when I want to say General Kenobi when someone says hello there, but there's always the chance that the person won't get it. Oh. He, and he, I will feel every time, oh, every okay. single time. It's always him. <laughs> there. It is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a consistent thing there. I always, I'm, I'm very, uh, very bad at knowing who people are. Uh, Usually at the beginning of the stream, Brick on Block is here, says hello there, and Just Brick says General Kenobi. That almost okay, good. every time before we even are live, like it, it's crazy. 
David West says uh, he's here. I'm back. I'm ready to chat. David, welcome Excellent. to the stream. How are you? How was your trip? I think you were out of town, right? Um, I'm pretty sure you were. How are you? Okay, you must have given me the wrong number then, Brick on Block, because the average that I saw was like 50 cents. So maybe, maybe that's the incorrect number. Or what color are you looking for? Or something. Did you click all th through all the colors? No, I didn't. But I imagine a part. Yeah, I don't know. Well, the color might make yeah. a huge difference. David West wants me to say that in a sing-song tone. Do I'm it. here. Wait, wait, what? 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 What, what, what song? No. Or you mean just? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> I'm not musically talented, and whatever song you tell me to do, what I'm gonna say is not gonna be remotely close to it. Not just in pitch, but in rhythm. I'm or, pretty excited for this. I'm, just, just do it. Just, just do something. G g give, give me a tune, Kyle. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a hard one. The, 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 the only thing, the way that this looks is it, it looks, looks more like something you could like spit, like, like fire. You could be like, I'm here, I'm back, <laughs> I'm ready to chat. Right, you know that's 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 all that I could see with that. Cool. Something poetic. With rap god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You need to sing it in like a uh, an old classical. I'm here. I'm yeah, yeah. Back. A musical, a 1960s musical. I'm ready to chat. <laughs> there you go. Believe it or not, I was actually in choir at one point in my life. Yeah. There's a reason I'm not in choir anymore. <laughs> that was when you were short and talked like a girl. Yeah, I was. I was. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Let's see. Fidel says a Lego store was announced to open soon in my city. I'll finally be able to get pieces from the pick a brick wall. Oh, cool. That's exciting. I want to go to the Lego store and get a pick a brick cup just to put in the store. I know it's not worth it usually, but like I just want to because I want to go fill up a pick a brick cup. <laughs> yeah. Last time I was there, they weren't open. When were you there last time? A couple weeks ago. At least the one in the soft this one. Oh, because you, I, I don't know if they're open where you can go do it, but that you can, uh, oh, you can have them do it? yeah, you can tell them what you want. That's how I did it a while ago in downtown Disney. Yeah, they didn't, all of the things like that, even had the paper coming instead of the, oh, right. no, then they probably weren't doing it at all. Um, Daniel wants to know, if you're buying bulk, uh, bulk of used Lego, what are you looking for? Figs, parts, etc. um, price and mostly Lego. Um, the, when you're buying bulk, it's rare that you know what's in it. Um, so you're basically looking for something that you can trust to be... Um, genuine Lego. Yeah, to be genuine Lego. Um, but obviously if there's figs in it, that's even better. Yeah, now we pay 450 per pound um, for a Lego that has been um, purified, as in it does not have non-Lego in it. Um, it hasn't been sorted in any other way. Actually, um, the minifigs have been taken out, um, which which is an important thing to say. Um, but uh, what what was I saying? I'm I'm very tired. Um, if you're buying, yes. Um, do you just are looking for that under five dollars per pound, mostly Lego? Uh, obviously, the more non-Lego is, the more it reduces that five dollars per pound. Um, so, just do keep that in mind. Um, basically, most bulk lots that are all Lego are going to end up being in the same range of worth, um, unless it's you know marketed as being something more, right? Like if they say you know it's all Star Wars sets or something like that. But if it's just a, a bin of pieces, then yeah, you should be looking at about five dollars or less per pound. Um, Brick on Block wants to know what's the time in California right now. Four thirty-seven. 
Uh, Fidel says that the town that the Lego store is opening in is in Culiacan, Mexico. Culiacan. I assume that's how it's pronounced. That's the Mexican city. You know, that doesn't... It's, it's by inherit. It's, it's by descent. I, I don't actually uh, speak any Spanish. Um, paperwork was very difficult. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's see. JB says he likes to look for 80 to 90 stuff. Castle and classic space type things. Um, yeah, that's definitely true. If you can see something with lots of vintage, um, that's always good. However, that also does mean that there's probably going to be a higher percentage of damaged, faded, and unsellable. Um, but that should be balanced out by the fact that the pieces will be worth more. Um, Dryden asks, Hi there, I restarted my store a few weeks ago and have been watching your videos for inspiration. So far I've only had three sales with 1,000 lots worth about $950. Am I doing something wrong or should I be more patient? Build it's the content, summer. Things so in advance. Yeah, oh, you, you just reopened during the worst time of the year. Um, like our sales are down by a, t a ton. A lot of other people's sales are also down by a ton. So you kind of just timed the market wrong. Um, also, you say 1,000 lots, but I don't know how many parts. Um, if you have 1,000 lots and 1,000 parts, then that's not super great. But if you have 1,000 lots and um, like 50,000 you know, parts, that's, that's very different. Um, but basically, as you increase in size, it, it, so long as those numbers are correct and your prices are correct, you should just see sales, assuming you are in the United States or uh, in a um, an economy where people are going to buy lots of Lego. Um, also, David West brings up, uh, whatever you get, trudge through it and list everything. The knowledge you gain is invaluable. Is in, 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 invaluable and compounds when you go to list similar items again. Yes, that's very true. Having done basically nothing but catalog for the past month, I can say that I have learned a lot more about things. Um, so that, that's definitely true. Um, it, it, the more you do it, the faster you get by many, the fact, many, many, many times over. Um, Daniel says it's 137 here in the Czech Republic, ready to sleep. That's probably a good decision. Uh, good night. I'm not going to lie, my first instinct was that was the temperature of the check. 137? <laughs> <laughs> that's very high, especially in uh, Celsius. Celsius. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not good. <laughs> uh, David says the fall is going to pop off through, pop off for orders. My lot count is going crazy. And summer's been decent, holding steady at five to six sales daily. That is definitely a lot better than, than what we're doing right now. So, uh, cheers to that. Um, Dryden uh, says, okay, that makes a lot of sense. I've got 4,000 parts for those 1,000 lots. Okay, so yeah, you're, you're still uh, definitely on the, on the smaller end, not trying to like, you know, insult your store, but um, you, you are definitely on the smaller end. So I would say just, just keep focusing. That's not really that abnormal for a store that size. Um, I don't know, at, at what point do you think it's reasonable to expect daily orders? Um, I don't think we were getting daily orders until we were at like 60,000 pieces, over 3,000 lots. Okay, so there Or something like that. So. But I'm not entirely 100% sure that that is an accurate number. But I yeah. feel like that's kind of what it felt like at the beginning of 2020. Yeah, and it was definitely a sharp change. We kind of just noticed one day that we were doing a lot more. Um, that might have just been an illusion, but that's definitely what it felt like. And we've kind of noticed that pattern before, that it seems to kind of go like this rather than just a linear increase so um, do keep that in mind um, Dunder Mifflin I I did not see your question but um, is it still on the screen no it is not I don't have the mouse Kyle has the mouse 
Um, you see that question I asked? A lot of chat came in right after I asked, and I don't want to retype it. Kyle will scroll up for us. Yes. Uh, okay, to revisit a previous question, would you take out a four-digit loan at 0% interest, being able to cover the payment at your current income, uh, and it almost double your store size? It would take it from 60K to 110 It would take it from 60,000 parts to 110,000 parts. Um, a four-digit loan with the ability to repay at 0% interest, double the store size. And you could repay it at your current income. I mean, I don't want to give you financial advice in terms of you know, loan. I'm it would be a discussion we'd have, but ye, I think we would go towards yes. Yeah. Because oh. we were going to. Yeah. There, there was a store that, that we were thinking about purchasing. Uh, we'd actually gotten the money, and it fell through. Um, so, so yeah, but you know that's. Uh, that's a decision that you really need to make. The for difference, yourself. I, the difference with that was it was taking our store from our current size, doubling it. It wasn't from sixty to a hundred thousand. It was from like one hundred eighty to over four hundred thousand. So I think, yeah, that's why we were yes on that. I don't know that I would, I, I would do a. Mm. We probably would. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But we've never claimed we're smart. Yeah, exactly. We've no, we've never claimed we're smart. Um, you know, a lot of business is... If you see how we're struggling to give an answer, this isn't something we would over, you know, a single night be like, okay, yeah. we're taking out a $5,000 loan to double our store size. It would when, be a long discussion and we crunched a yeah. lot of numbers to like figure out is this worth it and over the next six months 12 months can we add all these parts and all that stuff yeah. you need to think about that too if you're going to spend five grand to double your store size and you're going to you have 60 in your store right now and you're going to purchase 60 can i break well by the time you get that 60 in your store 30 percent or thirty thousand pieces might have already sold so you didn't actually double your store size you just doubled what you currently had yeah. It's not like an overnight, you snap your fingers, it's all in your store available for purchase. So like what we did was we went and factored in all the labor costs of what it would have been for not only us to do it, but for others. We, we factored in transportation and storage. Yeah, transportation, gas, storage, the amount of like more drawers, we have to purchase more drawers. Um, so a lot of stuff went into us deciding, yes, we're gonna spend a lot of money on this really big store that was going to double our store size over six months. It wasn't like, it would have tripled our store size had we were been able to put it all in all at once. But we knew that 50% of that was going to sell over the next six months when we were putting it in. Yeah. So you have to think about that too. Um, and something else that we have learned is the more you add to your store, the more orders you get. And the more orders you get, the harder it is to grow your store. So you yeah. got to think about that too. So there were a lot of multiple nights where we were like literally crunching numbers and like, you know, we, in we a spreadsheet trying to figure it all out. Just and we called relatives for advice. Um, I had we had a long conversation with my dad, uh, where we like walked through a spreadsheet, and he he laid out kind of like a worst case scenario, like what if our um, inventory worth plummeted to like what was it like five percent of our? It current was like ten percent of the current value, and even at ten percent of the current value, it would. Dis just barely we would have broke even on the investment so it was like it would have made sense but yeah think about it yeah to run worst case scenarios like what if for some reason the bricklink market crashes and it goes to 10 percent of its current value is it still a good decision for you to have that loan um and that that's kind of what you what you need to consider um and we had also ran it against how much we thought we were going to be increasing income by, not just our lot size, but also how the lot size and inventory size correlates to our income and how that affects our loan payments um, and and everything like that. Um, so I, I would, if you are seriously considering it, regardless of your age or financial experience, I would say that you should still talk to other people that you trust and get their opinions 
no matter what. Um, that 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 would be my my opinion on on that. And Remember and I would. Your teachers told you math would be useful later in life. This is it. Yeah, yeah this true. is when math becomes useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I would also actually say one thing is, don't just talk to people who will always tell you, yeah, do it, and like support you. Yeah. Talk to someone who is Almost slightly doubtful no. in what you're doing because then they'll be honest with you. Don't talk to someone who always says no, but find someone who will actually think about it from a perspective that's not. I want you to do it, whatever you want, or absolutely not, you shouldn't do anything. Find something yeah. in the middle where they're questioning what you're doing, because then it makes you actually think. Like, your dad 100% yeah. makes us think, to okay, is this worth totally it? To be totally honest, I'm not entirely... He might be watching, so I don't, I don't want to say anything <laughs> uh, too mean, but I'm not certain that he actually believed in the business until that point. Like, I don't think he thought it was a bad decision, but I think he was looking at it more as a learning opportunity than a potential income source. And I think after that conversation, he kind of started to change his mind. So you need to find someone who believes in you as a person, but might not necessarily believe in the idea that you have. Um, because they're gonna be real with you and they're gonna make you sit down and they're gonna ask you questions that kind of make you upset to hear um, and irritate you. And those are the questions you need to, uh, you need to make. Uh, and then their Mifflin says, if I did it, I would upload it all at once after the work is done. So it would be an instant jump from 60K to 110K. But I, yeah, you need to I think would, about the work. Like, how long yeah. is that work going to take? And will your store still be at 60 by the time it's in and stuff? But also, if you're purchasing, like, a store from someone and it's real easy to get in, you can literally, you, it's all done and you just up, like... There's a lot of factors that come in, which is, again, I think why we ha are struggling to just give you a... It's like, yeah, yeah it's a good answer. It's now, There's so many factors. Would we take out a loan without knowing, having a plan of where that money's going? No. Yeah. You need to... I, so, like, if you're just saying... I don't know what you're saying exactly, but if you were just thinking, I'm going to take out five grand just so I can go to Walmart and just buy some sets, I think that would be a potential mistake unless you have an offer from someone or you have a place that you know you can get XYZ for this price and all those kinds of things. So yeah. that's why we can't, um, it's hard. Also, um, maybe Evan will disagree with me here, but I would suggest that that's not how you do it in terms of waiting because you're still making payments during that period unless it's deferred. I mean, the difference um, here is 60 to 100,000 is very different than our 200 to 400,000. That, so. that is true, but I mean, I would still say that inventory is not earning you any money. It's costing you money. Yeah, it's costing you money because you're paying, you're making payments on it. While it's, you're working on it, but it's not actually selling and it's not generating income. You should, opinion, you should get it generating income as quickly as you can. Um, so that would be, that, that would, that would be my, my suggestion. And JB does bring up a good point. Also, if you do it instantly, increase that much. Make sure you're ready for your picking orders to go way up. Yeah, you if you increase at the rate that you can work, then you will understand um, whether or not you're reaching a limit. And because then, at a certain point, not at 110,000, but you, you might need to consider, is this something where I need to hire someone? And then that becomes part of an added expense that directly happened because of this. Um, so, you know, there's, there's lots of stuff like that. Um, Daniel says, one last question before bed. When you started adding used parts, uh, did your orders increase? Yes. But um, our order average went down. The value of each order was lower, but the amount of orders was up. Don't fall. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind. Like when we were selling all new, you know, the average order was 30, up to $38 some months. Um, but once we started doing new, or sorry, once we started doing used, Goodbye, Fidel, it went to like Beach. in the twenties and stuff. So it, it does that. That's definitely a factor you need to keep in mind yeah. too. Just because you have more orders does not mean you're making more money. In fact, I would argue the more orders you have, if you have ten orders, um, and they that you make a thousand dollars from those orders. Or if you have a hundred orders and you make a thousand dollars from those orders, it's actually more cost effective to have ten big orders, just because then you don't have your shipping little expense thing. Like there's a lot of things that factor into that too. Yeah, um, that is that is definitely something to consider as well. 
I've just realized we've been on top chat this whole time. Oh no. Oh, really? I wonder how many yeah. chat we're missing. How many chat how much chat we're missing? I'm very sorry if we've been ignoring you. Rain might be here. I've not seen Rain in a very long time. Okay. Oh, now we're on wow. live chat. I don't know that a ton changed actually. No, it looks basically the same to me. All right, yeah. Um, just Brick says true, but you're also paying much less per piece used. <sighs> Lock count directly contributes to the order. David says, Evan, I experienced the same thing. My average order slowly went down to $16 doing solely used. Then I ramped up the contracted output of sorting to upload the quantity and order average is back to 22. Yeah, so that that's, we're trying to do a mix of both. Um, like currently at the exact moment, Kyle is uploading a Ninjago set that's brand new or three of them. Um, but right before that, he was uploading used pieces. So we're yeah. doing a mix of everything now as opposed to um, just one. Just one or the other. We were doing obviously just new, then very quickly we switched to just used for a few weeks um, and everything was going down. Lot count, or maybe not lot count, 100%, but piece count has been going down a lot. So um, we're kind of trying to to straddle it now. Yeah. Um, and uh, JB says it's true, but you're also paying much less per piece used. Um, yeah, if you're doing everything yourself. Um, We'll talk about this probably more on our cataloging stream with Chris, but y the margin is better, but not by as much as might be advertised. Like you hear this eight to 10 times, and that is true if you are actually just doing $5 per pound, but there are a lot of other costs that get added to use that do not happen with um, with new. So that that is something definitely to keep in mind is if you're contracting out, and I, I don't think we want to say like the exact amount we pay, but if if you're contracting out, you know, um, double digits per twenty pounds and triple digits for cataloging per twenty pounds, that is definitely biting into your um, to your income, and I think it kind of ends up being similar. Definitely the margins are still better on used, but not by eight to 10 times. Um, David West says he just got uh, an email with subject line regarding Bricklink order. Oh, those are yeah, the best. Yeah, we love them. We get a lot of those actually that are just like, thanks, thanks so much, the order came in today, love your YouTube channel. But every time I see the regarding Bricklink order, it's like, oh, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it's not the best email to get. Also, I would just like to say this because it happens a lot. Um, if you send us an email with a question that's unrelated to your order, we do try to respond quickly, but it's not prioritized versus customer service. So sometimes your question might sit there for a long time. If you want your question answered very quickly, I would recommend that you join our Discord. Like, I'm, I'm not saying don't email us, because you totally can. I'm just saying, um, because usually when I respond to those emails, I also ask, I, I explain whatever the question was, and I suggest to join our Discord. So yeah, uh, I just recommend you join your Discord or Discord if you uh, join your own. Yeah, Discord. join your own Discord <laughs> if you have uh, if you have questions that you want uh, want answered in a quick time frame. Well, I have something quite concerning. Missing piece again. I have a lot of these left over. Oh, well, they're one by ones, so that's not. Super strange. Mm, no, I have five of them. Left David over. West donates five dollars for the Running Gear Hat Fund. Thank you, David. David, remember you are on our list of, of someone who gets it. So don't worry, you're you're already on the list. I know you guys can't hear me, but um, they can hear you. Now. I still haven't gotten a new Running Gear hat, <laughs> and I work for the company. Oh, uh, that's your fault too. No, though. I've asked three times, and you've worn them all. The ones we made. No. Yeah. You got you one, one of mine. Hats? No, you just don't fit me. There's a big size, remember? Oh, right. You, you've you gotten multiple hats, Kyle. No, I have one. I still no. have my original running gear hat. That's all I have. That and the Ari hat. OK. I want a new one. Sorry, Kyle's first in line. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked a couple times for a new one. David West says, dang, get my man Kyle a hat. <laughs> I still have my running gear shirts. What, what about the running gear shirt gang? Uh, Kyle has shirts. I have both. What what about the just a brick in the bucket staff shirts? When are we gonna get those? I I need to wear. When on one month we just randomly have a surplus, okay? 
It's gonna, it's gonna be a while. <laughs> a surplus of staff shirts when we have zero? No, 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 no. A surplus of money that we're like, what is this for? Oh, uh, okay. okay. We'll get some shirts. I'm pretty sure all that goes to the chow and chats. I found where my pieces went. They were not vitally important at all. But I'm gonna put them in because I don't want that many extra one by one. Please. David West said good karma. I got a fifteen dollar Bricklink order right after that super chat. Nice. Now here here's Thank the you, real David. question. Is it truly karma? Was it like a two mini fig order? True, because that's, that's a good order. That's, that's a, a, that's that's a, a you really pack it order. in a minute and a half and you're yeah. done. What was it when oh yeah, you you got uh we got a hundred and thirty dollar order and <laughs> yeah. Evan Tecton is like there's a big order to pack today because he hadn't actually opened it and I go in there, it's a hundred and thirty dollar order, I look over at the lots and it's like four lots. Um because we had a bunch of um nin the green Ninjago guy possessed. It's an expensive fig, and they ordered like all of them. And uh that was a very nice order. 12 items, 11 lots, figure parts. That's pretty good. Uh, JB says this week... There we go. Go ahead. Congratulations. Uh, JB says this week I found a, a missing piece when I packed it. Then last night while I was packing a different order, I found another piece they had ordered still in the tray. Uh, that was very embarrassing. At least I caught it before the order arrived at their house. We've done that before where I'll find a bag on the floor... Not usually of pieces. It's usually of like a mini fig. And then Evan texts me and said, Paul. And it's Paul, what order did this one go in? And it's always like, oh, crap. And then I go look through the orders and we mail it off. And But it costs you three whatever more to ship it. But yeah, yeah that happens. It hasn't happened in a long time, actually. Our but error it does happen rate has, we've, we've made a major push in the last months to reduce our error rate. And I like to say, I, I would like to think that it's... It's definitely gone down. Oh, I, th I know it has. Um, and considering you're packing all the orders. Well, well we, we had done like, a calculation. When I, we had percentages as to. I'm comfortable certain... sharing that percentage of mine. It was not <laughs> a good. I don't actually remember it off the top of my head, but if it you was do, like 12. <laughs> yeah, it was like I was responsible for like 12%. No, 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 no. 12% no. of the time, you would make an error. Yes. So 12% of all orders that I packed were, were yeah. was an incorrect order. So yeah. I'm, I'm very happy to say that I'm now almost the only person packing. Kyle comes in occasionally and packs, but he mostly is adding. Um, and there have been very few errors, so I'm very, very happy to, uh, very happy to say that I'm reformed. <laughs> I went to rehab, and now I'm better. Yeah. Um, Daniel says, our favorite quote in making a Bricklink store, short steps, long vision. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It does feel slow sometimes. Little things turn out to something bigger in the end. But uh, I, I actually think we've been, our lot count has gone up like crazy in the past two weeks. Yeah. Which partially is due to lack of orders, but <laughs> um, part of that is also, like, even, we had a, a 4th of July sale. Yeah. And we did a, a great amount of orders over that weekend, actually, um, averaging five to six orders per day um, for the for four days or something like that, which wasn't bad. And uh, even after that, our lot count, we were still going. It, it obviously dropped down that weekend, but we were right back at the end and it pushing above that. So, yeah, actually, the lot count has been doing really, really well. Um, so that's good. I am done with Mickey Mouse, everyone. So I'll show this off a little bit. First of all, I'd like to point out, I really love his little stand. All right, there was an instruction in the book that said to hold his head. But I love the stand he's on with his signature, and here's Mickey Mouse. What it's it pretty cool. There, it's a film, it's a frame of film. <laughs> um, pretty cool. Mickey Mouse here, he's a little wobbly, but that's okay. There's also a guitar that he has, and a camera, I think, um, or that goes with the two of them. Obviously, I haven't built Minnie Mouse yet, but that'll come in a future stream. But yeah, this is actually a pretty cool set. I don't. It does. It looks nowhere near as creepy as yeah. it pictured in online and in the catalog or whatever. I agree. Like, yeah, it looks much much better. And no, nowhere nearly as creepy as it even looks on the on the paper. Manual. Yeah, no, it actually looks pretty cool. I think. Still don't know if I'd want to wake up right next to it, but <laughs> um, you know, it's it's definitely not Yoda. So that's that's positive. Yeah. Or the Simpsons figs. I know or been the a Darth Maul debate. bust. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. There's that a all few Lego sets that are kind of just creepy. <laughs> Simpsons figs are the worst, though. Yeah. Um, uh, 
Uh, David says, anyway, in regards to the margin, I'm putting money into the parts three times now, buying it, paying for the first sort, paying for the second sort, and paying to be cataloged. Um, that being said, I'm still only putting about three cents into each piece, and I get about 10 cents back. Also, I'm cherry picking and listing the figs and stuff before that. That makes sense. Um, Just Brick says, I like the quote, we're on the little end of something big. That's a good um, quote. That's a good quote. And uh, Thunder Creation says, that, no. or tat, <laughs> there we go. is a great build. Um, Henry says, last, my last regarding your order was positive, and I thought the guy was going to be bad, so can't complain too much about it. Yep. Yeah, we've gotten very few people that, that, that are angry um, yeah. or um, complaining about something where we still... Well, I mean, you really should refund basically anything, but complaining about something where it's probably a little bit inaccurate, that very rarely happens. I mean, I can only think of... There was one order that we had kind of been like, hmm. Not the dark red one. That guy was... He, he was fine. But mm -hmm. I remember there being a minifig order uh, a, a while ago where they said that something was cracked or something like that. Um, or it was heavily damaged. Uh, and we were like, I do remember that doesn't that. sound right. Yeah. But We refunded the piece or the part, but it was like an expensive minifig. Yeah. Um, but they couldn't send photos because they couldn't figure it out in the... Oh, yeah, this was a really weird one. This was a yeah. while ago, though. But they couldn't send photos because they were doing it over the BrickLink chat or something or the BrickLink message thing. And so I was like, well, you can just email them to us. And they could never figure out the email thing. Uh, but also, like, English wasn't their first language, I don't think. It wasn't, in a, it wasn't a U.S. order. It was international. So... I think we just ended up refunding the fig. It's probably like a ten dollar fig or something because I was just concerned that we were going to get negative feedback. Yeah. Even though I'm pretty confident that what we sent was fine, um, the whole thing felt wrong. But regardless, they got their refund. Um, yeah. But I mean, the the moral is that's happened once, and we've done a lot of orders. Yeah. So Most the people Brooklyn community is even when there's something all. wrong. It's like, hi, I just want to let you know I got this. I don't want anything. Just wanted to let you know in case your inventory is wrong or something now. And yeah. it's like, uh, awesome, thank you, I appreciate it. But here's your refund because we missed a part, or whatever. Or usually, for a while there, we would send the part and refund it. Or no, no, no sorry, we would send the part and we'd have to pay for shipping again. But I think. Now, I, at least when I fix problems, I've kind of switched to just, refund just refunding it if they haven't asked for it specifically. Yeah. If they say, hey, do you still have this? Can you ship it out? Of course, we're going to ship it. It's easier. It's not easier, but it's, they get the piece in it. They're happy. But if they just, you know, if it's something else that's small and they're like, I don't really need it. It's okay. Then we just usually just small refund and that makes them happy. And it's, it's technically a little bit cheaper for us. Um, so. Jelmer asks, are you going to sell used sets as well on Bricklink? No, probably not. Uh, not a bit. Evan and I had actually talked about this a few nights ago. Yeah. Um, it's almost always better to part them out uh, in terms of value. Um, and also, you can almost never guarantee that the set is complete when you're buying it as a lot. If we were able to maybe get it from someone who is a collector or something and we were 100% certain that it was complete, yeah, it but, might be more cost efficient for us to sell it complete then as a set, but other than that, it's going to be better to part it out. Yeah, the labor on making sure it's complete would be a lot. Yeah. But someone said they were doing that today. But also, that was a bigger Star Wars Death Star 2 set, so that, that'll sell more, most likely, as a set. Um, just because Death Star 2 is not crazy pieces, it's just a set that's not super... Yeah. Or it's it's not a uh, it's pretty pretty rare I guess. You look like you're ready for a nap. I am I am I just realized I'm wearing my Mickey Mouse hat to build Mickey Mouse. I thought, so what, next what, time I'll have to wear Minnie Mouse ears so to build Minnie Mouse. What happened to <laughs> your uh, your Minecraft plans? Evan Evan is a uh, a Minecraft uh, enjoyer. So am I. But uh, <laughs> yeah, my, a Minecraft streamer. Minecraft Evan, streamer. Evan has apparently, a secret gaming channel. Apparently, everyone, I am a Minecraft streamer. Evan, I just learned that today. Evan right is, now. <laughs> uh, is PewDiePie. Many, many people don't know this. <laughs> um, but uh, Evan is secretly PewDiePie. Yeah. There it is. Secret's out. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, are we wrapping it up then? I think, I think we are. so. I think that's this fair. This is not a productive stream for me at all. <laughs> no. It's productive for Kyle. It's productive for Kyle. He uh, <laughs> uploaded or is uploading a set and uploaded some used pieces and stuff. So that was pretty good. Um, ah, David West is talking about a uh, high school musical. Nice. Oh, the movie? Wait. I don't know. I, I just saw that. High school musical speak. Oh, is that quote? Wait. That this could be the from oh, oh 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 oh, or the quote. This could be the start of something new. Yeah, that's High School Musical. <laughs> I've never actually seen High School Musical. Um, the first song I think in the movie is like called the "Start of Something New," or, or maybe it's not the first song, but it's like it's no, it is the first song. It must be. And they're like, "Would you like to give a performance?" No, I don't know the song, but I oh. totally feel like that is. I'll, I'll verify after this. Next I'll never stream. update you guys. I won't remember. Next stream, you need to give a performance. No, no, I don't do that. I did it. Actually, I kind of gave a performance in the Patreon video, right? You, that was the most. Sung a song? That was no, but I performed the oh, most. True, I was true. an actor. <laughs> true. Yeah, can we get a Patreon-only commentary from just a brick in the bucket of High School Musical? Is that something you would I, watch? I, I would be inclined <laughs> to say that that's a possibility. I don't know of High School Musical. We we might pick something else, but. Be more down if uh, adult beverages were involved. Yeah, I, I'm not opposed to doing a commentary of something. I don't know if you could post that on YouTube, because it would have copyrighted it material. Under, it falls under fair use. It commentary does. Yep. Then you can't monetize it though. Yeah, but it doesn't it's matter because it'd be video. Patreon video, so it doesn't get monetized anyway. But make a new tier: High School Musical Watch Party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, it's a watch party now. We're yeah. watching it together. Now we'll watch it all together. Live commentary with you guys involved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's always the $1,000 uh, fly out to meet us uh, tier as tier. well. Is that a thing? Should I, that be a thing? That maybe. should not be a thing. But but it's but it's whatever <laughs> dates we pick so we can get the cheapest flight. No, 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 no. It's just $1,000 and then they book flights and hotel. Ah, okay, okay. They have the opportunity. They have the... Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it, it gives them permission. <laughs> what a rip-off. Uh, can we just meet you at a Starbucks? <laughs> you pay. <laughs> yeah. We will give you the opportunity to buy us lunch yeah. in go, person. Go to, go, go to like a fancy steakhouse and they have to pay. Yeah, the David West Jabbit B collab. <laughs> <laughs> all right i think i think now we're actually done yeah i think we're all we're gonna wrap it up thank you guys so much for tuning in thank you to those of you who super chatted as always um david says we're gonna make a winner's short together sorry a hashtag winner's short together um yeah thank you guys so much for watching no music on the outro today i was lazy and didn't do it um or the intro or anything but hopefully this was enjoyable for those of you who are still here. I think we still have 19 people hanging out with us. So thank you guys. Uh, we will see you all in the next stream where hopefully we do something a little bit more productive. See you all later. <laughs>